Hi there! In this video, I'm going to address a question that's come up a few times about the differences between simple and complete induction. Now on this page already, I've written down the templates, if you will, of simple and complete induction, and notice that they really only differ in their induction hypotheses. Given that the overall structures of simple and complete induction proofs are very similar, students often wonder, how do we know which one to use? Now, deciding which one to use really depends on this, whether or not we need to use these extra assumptions, because note that P of K is assumed in both proofs. In the next few minutes, I'm going to talk about two characteristics that problems might have that are hints that you'll need to use these assumptions and therefore complete induction. So the first such instance is when you reduce the problem size, but the smaller problem size has different possibilities. Remember the game example from week two. You started off with two piles of size, say 20, and then you kept on reducing them down, and we saw that the optimal strategy was to just copy the other person's move, and so the second player would always win. When we did our induction proof, the game started off with two piles of size k plus 1, and then we said, what happens when player 1 makes the first move, say reducing one of the piles down to some number x? Well, we know that the optimal strategy for player 2 is to copy that move on the other pile, and we observed that now we have a game that really starts with x, and we've reduced the problem size. Unfortunately, we didn't know much about x. x could have been 1, it could have been 5, it could have been k over 2, or k. And so even though we knew we had a smaller problem, that is, we knew that x was less than k plus 1, we didn't know exactly what x was we had different possibilities of x. And so if we wanted to use the induction hypothesis, well, we had to be able to assume p of 1 and p of 5, p of k over 2, and p of k. And this is why we needed complete induction. There's another case in which you want to use complete induction. And this is when you reduce the problem into two or more smaller problems of different sizes. You've seen an example of this as well on problem set two. So if you remember the induction step from question one, you probably wrote down an equation which looked something like this. And then maybe you did some math and hopefully ended up with 2fk plus 1 minus 1. Notice that this recursive definition really gives a of k plus 1 into two smaller terms of different sizes. And the reason we were able to use the induction hypothesis in this question and get expressions for both a of k minus 1 and a of k is because we really had to assume both p of k minus 1 and p of k. And this only happened with complete induction. So with that, I hope I've clarified when you would want to use complete induction, but if you have more questions, please come ask me or post a question on Piazza. Thanks for watching and have a great day.